The purpose of this video is to give you an understanding of advanced sequence writing for Algebra 2 grad standard. You need to understand a new term. That new term has, is called recursive definition of sequences. And so here we're going to take a look at that. The, the terms that you need to understand are one is explicit, which you already know how to write those, and two, recursive definitions of sequences. And this is the new part. The explicit stuff is the stuff that you already know. It's the formulas written in the way that you're used to. These allow you to find a particular term of a sequence quickly. Just plug in the number. You're used to doing that. Basically what that looks like is uh, if I had a sequence, let's say I had t of n equals 4n minus 1, and I wanted to find the 100th term of the sequence, that's easy. That's t of 100. We'll just plug in 100. So I substitute that in, and I can find the 100th term of the sequence. Not a big deal. What we're going to be learning new, or we're connecting that to now, is what is called the recursive definitions of sequences. The recursive definition of a sequence has the property of referencing itself. It bases its answer on the previous term. What did you do with the number before it? And then just put that on the end to calculate the new one. So here is what we're looking at. These are useful when generating the sequence based on the previous term. So what they typically look like is a sub n equals, and in this case we had 4n minus 1, so it would, this is changing by 4 every time, so then it would be the previous term plus 4. I will explain that in detail here in the following parts of this video. You will understand what this means in a few minutes. So let's take a look at it, then we'll come back. So a typical problem might be with an arithmetic sequence. Now when you have an arithmetic sequence, there are two ways which, with which we need to write them. An arithmetic sequence might look like this. Remember, this is the first term. If we're going to find and write the equation for it, we need to go back one spot to the zeroth term of the sequence in order to do that, which that is something that we've been doing for quite a while. And so that looks like this. So if I had this number here, oh, I, I know t of 1 is negative 7 because I can see it right there. t of 2 is negative 3. Go back one spot to t of 0. Fill that in. Oh, looks like this is adding 11 or adding 4 every time. So if I take away 4 going backwards, that would get me to negative 11. So this sequence starts at negative 11. That's in my equation. And then it's adding 4 every time. Negative 11 plus 4n. We're used to doing that. If I wanted to do t of 3, then I would just add 4, and I'd be at positive 1 and so on, and I can figure that out. We're used to that. Let's take a look at the recursive definition. The recursive definition is over here. It's the same exact numbers, except we use a's instead of t of n. So a sub 1 means term number 1 is negative 7. Term 2 is negative 3. Term 3 is 1. We can see it in this pattern. We could keep that going. But let's talk about how we figure out a sub n, a sub any term. The way that you do that is you think about what is happening to the previous term. What is happening to the one before it? We're adding 4. We're adding 4. We're adding 4 every time. So that's how you write it. a sub n stands for any number, any term. Any term that I want, I can list that as a sub n. a sub n minus 1 represents the previous term, the one before a sub n. So take a sub n minus 1 and do something to it. So take the previous term, which in this case, let's say the previous term was a sub 2, it was negative 3. Well, what I'm doing to it is I'm adding 4. So add 4 to it, you get the next number. So take the previous term, which is notated with a sub n minus 1, that's the previous term, and then just add 4 to it every time, and you're going to be able to calculate the new term. This is what the answer looks like. Previous term plus what am I doing to it? And that's all you need to be able to write it recursively, because then what you're doing is you have to know the one before it so that you can add to it, and then you can find that exact one. So here is what um, an example of what I would like you to try. So now we have a basic understanding of what they look like. So what if we had this particular question? So here is our question right here. We have this pattern, and we know that it's going 11, 18, 25, and so on. Pause the video now and write down the two equations as best you can. Unpause it to find the answer. Okay, welcome back. The solutions that you should have are, you can see that this is adding 7 every time. So if I go back, this thing starts at 4, plus it adds 7 every time. That is the explicit definition. The recursive definition is based on the previous term, the a sub n minus 1. So if I want to figure this one out, I need to know this one. 
And then what am I doing to it? Well, I'm just adding 7. That's it. That's the recursive definition for that um, sequence. Let's try geometrics. Okay, so if we want to try a geometric equation, that's going to look like this. So let's say we have this geometric here. And on this geometric example, I've got 8 going to 40 going to 200. If you cannot clearly see that that's multiplying by 5, then remember, you take the next number divided by the previous, and you can get that calculation. So I can take 40 divided by 8. I can see that that's 5. So going this direction, I'm multiplying by 5. So to go backwards, I'm going to have to divide by 5. So t sub 0, the 0th term of the sequence, is 8 over 5. And it's multiplying by 5 each time. It's getting 5 times bigger. Okay? Simple. Starts at 8 fifths. It's being multiplied by 5 every time. We've done those for a while. Recursively, this what I do is I say, okay, well, I want to figure out a sub n, which is a sub anything. I need to know the previous term, and then what is happening to it. What is happening to this previous term? Well, every single time it's being multiplied by 5. So what you can do is say, okay, I want 5 times this thing. So it's 5 times the previous term. That's all I'm doing. That's the recursive definition. So... Here is one to try. All right, I'd like you to pause the video after you write down or copy down what this uh, question is asking and then come back for the solution. Okay, thank you very much. Here is the answer. So the answer for this particular question would be I am taking the numbers and I'm multiplying by 1.5 every time. So to go back, I need to divide by 1.5. So if I'm going to divide by 1.5, I'm going to get... 8 divided by 1.5 to come back, that's 5 and 1 third, or 16 thirds, or 5.3 repeating is what it starts at. So it's 5.3 repeating, and then it's multiplied by 1.5 every time. Or you could have 5 and 1 third times 1.5 to the n. You could have 16 thirds. Either way, that's the explicit definition. We're used to that. The recursive definition is I take the previous term, which is a sub n minus 1, what am I doing to it? Well, I'm making it 1.5 times larger. So just take 1.5 times the previous term, and you're going to get uh, the continued definition for that sequence. So now, going back to where we started on this, the very first thing that I showed you back at the beginning was the difference between what the recursive definition looks like and what the um, explicit definition looks like. And so in doing so, at this point, I believe it now that you've seen all this, that you're able to write them explicitly or with the recursive definition with little to no problem. I think that this is not something that's going to be too um, difficult for you. So if you go back to here, just remember the explicits are what we're used to. These base everything on the previous term. And if you understand that the previous term was this right here, this a sub n minus 1 represents the previous term, the one before a sub n, then all you have to remember is what is happening to the previous term. Good luck.